the general solution. We go back to our shallow water equations, our equatorial shallow water equations, which I haven't bothered to write out again. But what I want to do is substitute in these expressions to those shallow water equations for the solutions. We're looking for wave-like solutions, right? All kinds of wave-like solutions which propagate along the equator in the x direction, positive or negative. And so we're saying that these solutions have this form. Now, I'm sorry about the notation. Uh, at this point in the lecture, k means the wave number in the x direction. Okay? Uh, it's often used for that, and I, I have a little bit of inconsistency in my notation. But just remember that from now on. k is just the wave number in the x direction. We're looking for waves that propagate in the x direction. And we're saying that u is some coefficient of amplitude, which depends on y. So that's going to complicate things a bit. Just like we did last time with the Rayleigh equation, we've got a variable coefficient here. And we put in this kind of solution for u, v, and eta. And what we're going to do is look at different types of structure that we might get. Okay? So let's just have a look at this. Let's say, in color, the circle is the, is the eta variable. Right? So that could be the depth of the thermocline. Or it could be the surface pressure in the atmosphere, if you like. It's a geostrophic stream function of some sort. Right? And so in this example, we have something which is symmetric about the equator. So a positive anomaly in eta, a positive value of eta, is red here. North and south equator, it's symmetric. And it's blue is negative. North and south equator, it's symmetric. And if we think about rotational flow around a positive anomaly, then it's going to be clockwise in the northern hemisphere, anticlockwise in the southern hemisphere. And the other way around for the negative, anticlockwise in the north, clockwise in the south. And you can see that if the eta variable is symmetric, then the u variable will be symmetric as well. It'll have the same sign in the northern hemisphere and in the southern hemisphere. But the v variable will be anti-symmetric. It'll have an opposite sign and it'll be its maximum will be out of phase by a quarter of a wavelength. Here's another scenario in which we have an antisymmetric thermocline perturbation. We have antisymmetric U, but symmetric V. And so again, eta and U have the same symmetry, V has the opposite symmetry, and it's displaced by a quarter of the wavelength in phase, its maximum phase. So that's why, if you look at this expression here for V, We've added this pi by 2 here as a phase displacement for the solution. Now, not all our solutions are going to be rotational type flow. We'll also have divergent type flow. And here, obviously, the example of that is a Kelvin wave. So here's a Kelvin wave with V equals 0, right? And a positive displacement of the thermocline, or thermocline thickness, and a negative. And you'll see that there's convergence here um, between the two. And that corresponds to downward movement ahead of this dip in the thermocline, which will be consistent with the whole thing propagating eastwards. Okay? If it goes down here and up here, then the next thing that's going to happen is this, this, this dip will be further to the east, and this crest will be further to the east. Okay? So that's the right configuration to have eastward propagation, which is what an equatorial Kelvin wave does. Right, so there's a description of the solutions we want to try in our equations. Then, well, there's the whole laborious process of putting these solutions into the shallow water equations and seeing what drops out. And it takes a few pages. I've done it for you. Right? It's here. So there's our shallow water equations. There's our solutions. And one, two, three pages later, you get this equation. Okay? So I'll just go back to the original slide. This is the equation you get. Okay, and it's not an algebraic linear equation because you had that variable coefficient. What we have is an ordinary differential equation and I've eliminated eta and u and we've got an equation for v. Right? So it's, a, it's an equation for the amplitude v tilde and it's an ordinary differential equation, second order differential equation. Right? So what kind of equation is it? Well, it's an equation where you've got this coefficient in front of the, of the v-tilde here, uh, which could either be positive or negative, right? If y is smaller than this big y, 
right? Then this is going to be positive, right? And that will admit oscillating solutions in space. So the structure, the spatial structure of our solution is going to be oscillating in space between these bounds, big Y. Um, if you are outside these bounds, big Y, right, then you'll have an exponential solution to this equation. It'll be exponentially decaying in space. This paints a picture of a solution where near the equator, the spatial structure of our zonally propagating wave will be wiggling around with a certain number of oscillations near the equator and then at a certain distance just decaying away to zero. Right? So it's going to be stuck on the equator with a certain structure. What is this big Y? Well, this big Y, it's, uh, it's the width of the equatorial waveguide and it's a bit complicated. I mean, it depends on various properties of the wave, omega, k, right? It also depends on beta. Um, so, yeah, for different waves, it'll have different widths, but it basically scales in a similar way to the equatorial radius. Um, so, and, and this is the value of the parameters you need to make y a maximum. All right, so this is the zone where we have some meridional wave structure, um, big Y. What does this meridional structure look like inside those bounds, right? Well, this is the solution, okay? Here it is. It's um, V tilde is proportional to this thing, Hn of y prime. Y prime is a non-dimensional y, okay? Y over equatorial radius. Hn is the uh, Hermite polynomial. And e to the minus y squared over 2. This is what, like what we had for the Kelvin waves before, except now we multiply it by this Hermite polynomial. So the product of these two things is called a parabolic cylinder function. And you can see pictures of it sketched here on the right. So there are two types. One is symmetric and the other is anti-symmetric. And there are many solutions, right? The properties of the Hermite polynomials is that you have h naught is equal to 1, h1 is equal to something linear, h2 is something quadratic, h3 is something cubic, etc. And they have these properties where you can write down hn in terms of the previous and the next one, and there's a simple expression for the derivative, so that's what makes them mathematically useful. So for n equals 0, 2, and 4, even numbers of n, v is symmetric. This expression here will be symmetric about the equator. So you have 0 here, um, and then you've got one here which has a single wiggle in the middle, one here which has two wiggles in the middle. Okay. They're all symmetric about the equator. Uh, so, y positive here, y negative here. Okay. And then this is the anti-symmetric set. So, these are for odd values of n. And you, you have something which changes sign across the equator with an increasing number of wiggles as it goes, depending on the value of n. Now, these are sketches of the structure for this variable v, for this amplitude v, right? Remember, u and eta will have the opposite symmetry. For example, if, if you want to look at u for n equals naught, it'll be anti-symmetric. And if you want to think about what the Kelvin wave looks like, well, the Kelvin wave is none of these, right? Because v equals naught for the Kelvin wave. So then that's not even in this set of solutions. You have to think of n equals minus 1 corresponds to the Kelvin wave. And in that case, u and eta will be symmetric. That is what they look like in the, what, the, what the amplitude looks like as a function of latitude. What about the propagation? Right? So you can substitute these solutions into the equations and you can get this dispersion relation. This is the dispersion relation for all kinds of tropical waves, including Kelvin waves. And you'll have a different kind of wave for different values of n, n being the index for the Hermite polynomials. And so that's a whole family of dispersion relations. And it's basically cubic in omega, because you've got omega squared up here, you've got another omega down there, so effectively it's a cubic equation for omega. And for each value of n, in principle you've got three solutions for omega. So let's see what they look like. Here they are. So this, here's the y-axis is omega, and the x-axis is the wave number. Okay, so on the right we have things propagating towards the east, and on the left, they're propagating towards the west. And 
for each value of n, we have a curve. And so you can see n equals 1 here, for example. What does this curve remind you of? It looks like that inertia gravity wave that we started the lecture with, right? It's, it's got a minimum frequency, okay, uh, which depends on n now. It's slightly off-center. It's not completely symmetric like it was before. That's because we've got that beta effect in the equations now. And there will be a corresponding solution for a negative omega, uh, which is one of our other solutions. That's just a mathematical solution. It doesn't add any physical understanding, right? So there's one, two solutions for n equals one. And then this third solution for n equals one is this. And what does that remind you of? What do you think that is? Anyone? What kind of wave is that? There's a dispersion relation like that propagating to, towards the west. Hmm? Yeah, it's a Rossby wave. It's, it's, it's an equatorial Rossby wave, right? Then in between, we have this strange hybrid solution, n equals naught, um, which is, well, when it's propagating towards the west, it behaves like a Rossby wave. And then when it's propagating towards the east, it, it goes to a higher frequency, and it behaves like a gravity wave. So what would you call that? It's called a mixed Rossby gravity wave, or sometimes called a Yanai wave. And finally, we've got this one, a straight line which only exists for eastward propagation. It's a straight line, so it means that's non-dispersive, right? The same phase speed for all wavelengths. So what's that? Non-dispersive wave propagating eastwards on the equator. That's our equatorial Kelvin wave. So it behaves just like a gravity wave when there's no rotation. So that's the whole family. So that, that's the dispersion relations. That's what they look like on a dispersion diagram, um, omega against k. What do they look like physically? What kind of structure do they have? Uh, we've sh I've shown you the latitudinal structure. Okay? Let's go to the kind of two-dimensional structure now. And here are some examples for n equals 1. So this is what an equatorial Rossby wave looks like. So the contours are eta, and the arrows are the flow. And we have to the north and south symmetric two dips in the thermocline, or high pressure areas in the atmosphere, if you like. And, and there's a kind of geostrophic looking flow which is flowing around those, those perturbations, right? And it's propagating towards the west. Here's the Kelvin wave. Actually, that's n equals minus 1. If you, if you want to check that, you can. If you want to check that the n equals minus 1 corresponds to a Kelvin wave, put it back into that dispersion relation. So yeah, there's a Kelvin wave. V equals 0. And you can see that it's converging where it's going to dip uh, for, for eastward propagation. Here's the gravity waves uh, for n equals 1 for a certain frequency. You have an e a westward propagating inertia gravity wave and an eastward propagating inertia gravity wave. They look fairly similar, but they're not exactly the same because, as I said, it's slightly asymmetric the, uh, between the, the two directions for propagation. And then this is the mixed Rossby gravity wave. So you have an anti-symmetric structure in eta, and you have a sort of mixture of rotational and divergent flow.